friends, today we're going on another adventure. This time, we're taking Dan, I think. So, if you've seen the previous story, we pulled Dan's bus out of the weeds, essentially, where it had been sitting for 10 or 15 years, and we got it running onto a trailer. Well, he's been putting about two months of work into it and hasn't exactly driven it since then. And he's on his way over right now on essentially its first test drive so we can look it over real quick and then drive 400 miles with it. This could be great. I'll be driving the red bus as a support vehicle uh, loaded with an entire spare cooling system amongst other things. What could possibly go wrong? Well, actually a lot, a lot could. It's here. Look, Ma, no trailer. Under its own power. Wow. Dan made it successfully to my house, but he lost all of his power steering juices, so we're gonna put a different pump on. It's okay, the garbage truck has been leaking a lot, so I think I can get away with it in front of my house. You're probably fine. Okay, Dan, so what are we doing? Okay, so we, uh, we replaced the power steering pump uh, with uh, one one from somebody else's van. Thank we you, did Dan. have to steal the, the yeah. We had and to steal the, the reason that we did that is because last night when I was backing into my driveway, I left a whole bunch of juice on the road when I was making a big downhill, you know, turn, like it was under a lot of pressure. So Craig noticed that, so I was like, oh, it's leaking from the back of the pump. It may have been, but it was definitely leaking from the big fill cap, which reservoir. is not a fill cap. Yeah, the this, reservoir this whole top, top was off was threaded, not to be removed. But in my uh, innocence, I <laughs> removed that probably to fill it with power steering fluid. Oh, by the way, don't fill your van again with power steering fluid. It kills them. Yeah, you want automatic transmission fluid. Automatic transmission fluid. So now so we're just cleaning it up so we can see any new leaks. We're using the CRC Pro Strength degreaser. This stuff's is pretty nice awesome. Stuff. I've never used this before, it's but like it goes out. Like, a, like it foams up and then you leave it and you, you brush it. And I'm happy with that. Then we'll be able to see any leaks we get. You're in good shape, dude. So it is uh, running super rich. We just disconnected the oxygen sensor, hoping to put it into closed loop mode or open loop mode. But um, I don't know. Give it, give it a rev. Yeah, that's a lot of smoke. You want to send it? We didn't do it. Nothing happened. So should we just send it? Full send. Full send. Yeah. Are you silly? So I'm behind Dan and uh, still getting some black smoke, but we also just got a big backfire. Like I've never seen anything like that. But overall, seems to be running okay. So we're just topping off some coolant. How's she running? Well, I'm just kind of musing on the different computer programs that control the ignition and the fuel because at full throttle she runs like a dream but off idle not so good so I've kind of got this like drag racing launch Vanagon starting that's good for your clutch on. that's oh I don't slip the clutch I just like whoa yeah. you just drop it drop just, it like it's hot just drop it right right into gear and then just accelerate full throttle I've heard you miss a few gears yeah, it's 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 the most contrary manual transmission I've ever driven. I'd like an automatic. There are there are gears somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. It's like stirring a soup pot. <laughs> so here we're we're adding some coolant. We're using the good old Peak antifreeze, and uh, things are good. It's staying dry. Our power steering is working perfectly now. Our belts are staying tight. Um, everything's good. Okay, Dan, what you doing? Hello. So what we found here is one of the wires in the harness that goes to the distributor cap was um, a little lonely. It's not attached to anything. That's and off the hall sender. He's brown and browner. Brown and, and usually black. there would be a little, like a little tab here this grounds to. Right. So we're gonna just ground it to one of these bolts. But for, right here. for the record, I just wanted to shove it under this. No, that's this not grounded to anything. Craig we're gonna do it correctly. So Craig wouldn't let me do that. So. We always carry. Uh, heat shrink connector kit. I get this on Amazon. I'll put the link below and these are real nice You get your varieties you stick this sucker on there. You use your crappy set of Harbor Freight uh, Little doodads you crimp it you hit it with a lighter that every Vanagon owner random way keeps in their pocket yeah. for their recreation I feel personally attacked Why? Shit. You did that wrong. Let's get another one. 
He screwed it up, so we have to use another one. But well, I was given try. I was given the blue one, which is for a larger wire size, nah, and so it was wasn't fine. engaging pre-crimp, and it came unengaged during the crimping operation. I blame my tool pusher here. Also, thanks for bringing all of the tools. Yeah, this is standard Vanagon kit. So the people of the internet know. So we uh, we're made it like 60 miles. We're having crazy issues. It seems to be going from rich to lean. Like it, it's blowing black smoke, which is rich, but then it's backfiring, which is generally lean. Um, found a couple things. I'll show you what we found. I don't know if this is gonna solve it, but so we'll the see. boot, the intake boot was a little loose up here and down there. And then this, which I was always told is a heater, but maybe it's a valve was unplugged in the intake line. And now we're hoping that that solves some things. I don't know, it's plugged in. We've re-plugged in the oxygen sensor. I don't know if that's gonna fix it. And we've also ungrounded our- Let's reground. We'll regrind it. Put it put it right there. That's a good spot. It's factory. It's see, factory. See well, we've made it about a hundred yards uh, and then we really broke down. She's running super rich again. So I am taking the, uh, taking the oxygen sensor out. I think there's a grounding issue with the engine. So we're gonna go get a ground cable and there's an auto parts store like right there. We're gonna walk over there, get a ground cable and hope that can help us. More electrical. Yeah, my suspicion of grounds makes sense. When we inspected it to add another ground cable, we found one ground wire that was just uh, sort kind of, of looped over there and twisted on. Not quite what we're after. So we're adding a connector out of our kit. Get that on Amazon. I'll post the link. Just for good measure, we're gonna add a bunch of this uh, Lucas injector stuff. It says this treats up to 100 gallons, so we're gonna use all of it in five gallons. That's probably good. Just put a whole bunch, maybe about half a jar in there. So Dan's here, uh, he's back there doing the things. He's adding these ground cables and repairing the one that we saw that's visibly damaged. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's gonna get us running. We also think it might be the airflow meter and because it might be the airflow meter and we don't have a spare, we put our parts network into place. We called our buddy Nate uh, in Pittsburgh. He took the parts off of his car, delivered them to our buddy Fred, north of Pittsburgh, who is going to be leaving in about three hours to drive them this way. So somewhere between here and Granny Gross, we're gonna have more spare parts delivered. Pretty awesome. We've got to disconnect the battery every time we stop now because, uh, well, for whatever reason, it is um, the radiator fan is staying on, so no big deal. Damn lie. Okay, stop. So oh. we're replacing the cap and rotor with a used one. Look at that wire, though. That's not very good. Hopefully it works. We'll clean it up a little bit. Okay, give me some cranks. <laughs> Give me some cranks. I'm gonna replace this idle control computer behind the rear tail light here with a known good one. Um, I don't know, these can do weird things. After checking the injector spray pattern, and it's spraying and uh, adding our grounds and replacing the idle control computer, one of these things may have solved something. Oh, and new cap and rotor. Because, I don't know, it seems to be better. We're gonna tighten up the alternator belt and see what we can do. Dan literally just broke down at an auto zone. So let's see if we can't fix this thing. We have 103 miles to go. I reckon that'll take about four hours at the current speed because we break down about every 20. So that's five more breakdowns um, plus some gas and grocery stops. We should be pretty good. Uh, things we have determined it is very random. It just does the thing it wants to do. I think the catalytic converter has gone bad. I think the cap broke up and it's randomly clogging itself. Uh, also the exhaust has come more or less detached. The, um, the whole J pipe where it comes from the collector, uh, it's broken, it moves now. So uh, it's literally falling apart. It's fun, these, these cars are fun. Everyone should get three of them to start. So it's running too rich with the with the oxygen keep, sensor. Keep the oxygen sensor unplugged. Yeah, and get the bus there. We've also get concluded the that the exhaust is no longer attached. 
get the house to the camp out. It doesn't matter how it runs all weekend. Sounds good. Fire it up. Give me some crankulations. I don't know if we have enough electricity to go into the spark later. Oh, come on, girl. She's smelling rich. It's a richness issue. It's just dumping fuel. What happened is this is no longer attached to that. And this sound, this rattle, is that. It's literally moving inside that plant. And that's the rattle we're hearing. So what's crazy is we're actually running pretty good right now. Dan's ahead of me and we're doing 70, 75 miles per hour on some open roads. It's running well. It, it bogs down and makes the black smoke when he hits full throttle. So when the enrichment switch is engaged on the throttle body, it's dumping fuel, it's going to crap. But other than that, it's actually running pretty okay, which is surprising. Um, I don't know how long that's going to last, but it's not, it's not running as badly as it, I don't know. Oh, it's been an adventure. We, we've made it over 200 miles with that bus that hasn't driven in 10 years. Yeah, the radiator fan won't shut off. Dan, how's it running? Hot? Cold? We don't know. Oh yeah, the temperature. But it's cooling. Really work. Yeah, it is doing things. And yeah, the the power's there now. It's it's running pretty good. You said. When the throttle body is right, kind of in the thirty to sixty or thirty to seventy percent range, you know, she hums right along. We're climbing hills and fourth gear, fifties. As long as we're down. keeping to the side roads and hitting exactly the right RPMs, it's doing it. So we're wow. gonna we're gonna arrive. Yeah. We're only like twenty minutes out. So we're stopping off at one of my favorite little country stores out here in State College. Um, oh, would I? No. Oh. Welcome to Pitt. We're about 200 miles into this journey and we're almost there. This has been really fun. There's something to be said about taking a car out of a field, putting no test miles on it at all, and then taking it on a relatively large road trip. Road trip. I don't know. Is it responsible? Absolutely not. Is it fun? Yeah, it's pretty good. So people of the internet, how do we do? Good evening. We had a tough day. We had some high points, like now. Yeah, we've arrived. We should clarify. We have arrived. We have arrived. We're here. And we had some low points, like in the bank parking lot, when we were fully no start. No starting whatsoever. So we are just shy of 12 hours into a three hour drive. Right. That's uh, pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, the fun thing, I was thinking about this. I know people who have done this on a bicycle in less time. Ooh, that's a tough <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, it is. Well, we, we people had, have ridden their bicycle here in We West found time. some nice Vanagon roads, for sure. Route 45, it's as good as it gets. Um, the uh, exhaust came completely apart. It's completely detached, which but I got fun. bolts from an Amish man that we'll use to fix it. It was, uh, so it was like we were rocking and rolling into the campground with open headers at eight o'clock at night, so. Uh, uh, my bus runs fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's exactly correct. Good night's sleep. The van smell seems to have faded. Yeah. So this is your first night in this, right? First night in this. First, first night in any van again. Driving. First day driving a van again. Um, first 200 miles on a van again. Learned a lot about troubleshooting because we did all of the things. Um, but every time something breaks, you learn and you get, you get, oh, everybody tells you, oh, well, here's what you do to fix that and fix it forever. And then you go buy more parts from Go Westy. Yeah. You Say that again. I said it's my first night sleeping in a van again. Everything went okay except the curtain rails will be going up immediately because it's a greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. The sun, the sun yeah, wakes yeah. you up. Yeah. Our next step for the day, we're gonna remove this top and actually replace the canvas at the campground because we got plenty of labor here. And they'll probably come and help because, you know, Vanagon people come like moths to a plane. Nice. <laughs> Trick. 
take the whole top off. It's easy. Are you sure you want to do this? That's much nicer. You sure you want to do this? Yeah. You got your bolts loose back there. Put bolts the top loose. down. Top down. All the way down? Uh, or do I prop it up? Well, we need to zip tie these two things shut. So yeah, now you need to... Hmm. Zip tie what? That. These? Yeah. So it needs to be all the way down to zip tie those. And then you need to lift it up and prop it up. Just tie that. All right, now I'll do it from the other side without David's audio. <laughs> oh, y'all are recording crap. Oh, yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. Quiet on, quiet on set. Oops. Oh, so, you don't want that, yeah. No, don't do that. So you got one screw left, take it out. Yeah, one screw left. That's propped up with our gunk wipes. We love these things for degreasing and cleaning hands. Thanks, gunk. We'll get some, we'll get some dudes here. We'll have to go gather some people. Okay, take your props out. Like that. What you doing, Dan? I'm taking all the screws out with my awesome little tool. This is the perfect size for this job. It's not too heavy, it's really lightweight, it's powerful. It's got like a ratcheting kind of driver action. Also, make sure you don't slash your cushions when you're cutting the top off. Oh yeah, we did if we did we did slash it with a razor blade. Get out of the way, we have no brakes! That's not true. <laughs> Turn right, then turn left onto Creek Road. Hey guys, we are, uh, we made a little trip into town to the Dollar General in Dan's van. I'm driving it. It has brakes, that's what we're saying. And um, no exhaust, it sounds like a Harley. And we have this giant skylight, see this? This is uh, this is huge because there's no Westy top on it. And it, it actually handles okay. It's very loud though. Okay, so we just turn the key. And we have to get the anchor to a whole bunch in place. And then you jump in while it's moving. Right, you want your meat now, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go look at antiques. We're here at the Church of Faith. Church of Faith antique store. This is quite a description. I mean, it's New Holland, mm -hmm. but they just say animal found. Don't say that. <laughs> so we went to the antique store. What did you get, Dan? Three cassette tapes. Yeah, because there's a cassette player in your bus. We got the Gingerbread Good Times. We got uh, Country, Dixieland. Uh, and we've got a string quartet. Uh, but two of them are bootlegs. And It'll be good. Were, also, they were a dollar. Good. Contact, fired up. Did you get the anchor? <laughs> uh. Road. 
let's clean this moldy crap off with some Clorox. We'll just, we got this at the dollar store, so we know it's good. Oh yes. So this is all cleaned up and dry, and now I've got the center marked, and we're putting it on the center here. We're gonna start by attaching it to the top, working our way to the back, and then flip it over, put it on the car, do that. Okay, so we've got the tent all attached up here. It kind of sucked to do, but you know what? We got through it. Now we're gonna put the yeah, top on the car, finish it off. Okay, we've got the top all taped up and we're ready to put it on. <laughs> and we're up. Oh man, you're gonna have so much, such nice sleep tonight. Okay, we can put that down. And no, just put it down, just put it down. All we need the guys for is putting it down. We can get it from here. Awesome, perfect. Oh, you got yeah. it. Done. Driving yeah, it's pretty much done. Oh, wait. Oh, you're not going to lift that up? Well, we can, we can fiddle that. We don't need to get Okay, the top is like vaguely on. We're making adjustments and finishing off the tent. We are all very thankful right now for this little guy. This is my SureCall cell phone booster. There is no cell service at all here. But if you go inside my bus, you get three bars. This thing's awesome. Okay, tell us where we're at. Where do we stand? I stand here today on the bank of a beautiful river on a beautiful afternoon, ready to pop my top and check its tightness. Yes, let's see if it's tight. It's no longer topless. Here we go. Three. Oh, oh, it's Velcro. I okay, that sounded I terrible. Sound. I was like, oh, no, it's, a, it's just Velcro. We're good. Give it the send. Nice. Oh, nice. Real nice. Tight like a tiger. Tight like a tiger. Dan says, I bet I could climb this tree. I say, you see the poison ivy? He says, I'll be fine. As his hand elegantly touches the poison ivy. I'm not allergic. To you need some cleats. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have our answer. How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? It's, it's a slope thing. Well, we've got the front on and it looks just absolutely awesome. Dan's back here working on the back right now, which is terrible. Dan, These do you have any input? Are stupid. It's pretty terrible, yeah. You'll get it. Nobody likes these. Why do we, I could have driven a car. Yeah, yeah, Vanagons suck, especially this job. No AC, they're so unreliable. They're pretty loud too. Especially when you cut the exhaust off. Yeah. Local meat, potatoes, Milwaukee M18 fan. Kings for charcoal. Yeah. Oh God, it's so hot. Ah, uh, this is my hobby. I enjoy this. This is fun. This is fun. Yeah, I'm gonna take this back now. <laughs> Thank you, Milwaukee. We got these beans at the uh, local local market. Look at these. They look amazing. They're like all kidney beans. Good morning, people of the internet. You'll never believe what we just found. This is the missing piece of Dan's exhaust. Someone found it on the road in the campground. And now, in theory, we can put the car back together. How ready do you think you are? I'm ready, willing, and an angel. I don't think we're leaving anytime soon. Why? What's this? That's the ring on that exhaust. You think? That's the piece. Someone found the piece. We can put the what? thing back together. It fell out of this, fell we, out of my car. That's Somebody the piece this? out of your car. Someone oh. found it, and we can now put the whole band back together. Where the hell did they find that? Because On the road. We can get these bolts out. We can put new ones in. We can solve this problem. This is the proper way. Just start I bending I it. it. I think I got it. Start bending it. Yeah, yeah that's gonna break. So donut off.
Perfect. The J pipe is off. Nice. It's usable. We can do this. All right, more heat, more banging, but I don't want to do it on the picnic table. No, 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 we got to get these ones out. That's going to be the tricky bit. You work on those, I'll work on this. some way to clean this flange a little bit. I got a wire brush. That would be good. Yep, it's totally empty. Perfect, that's what I want. That catalytic converter is completely empty. All of the crap broke up on our journey. That's perfect. Okay. Hang on, let's see what this thing does. Okay, the exhaust is now attached. Send it. <laughs> oh, so quiet. We should tighten that too, but. So quiet. Idling perfect. It's perfect. It's off idle hesitation, it's totally gone. What's that? Let me switch the computer back and see if it gets worse. Okay, you think it was the computer? I don't know. But well, no, just run it, it's good. Let's let's send it. It's, well, I think everything- I every... want to know what to, I put the throttle body in there too. I want to know what it was. Well, we'll switch those things out. I think it was either the, we changed the ECU, or we changed the airflow meter. One of those two fixed its problem. Well, I think we actually fixed it. We put the airflow meter and the ECU on, and the thing actually runs great. Not only that, it's quiet now. I think Dan's gonna have a way better journey home. We're convoying home with a couple other buses. We've got our communications network in place. We're gonna have a good time. Hopefully we break down less times, and it takes less than 12 hours to get home. Cruising behind Fred. Bus is running great. He's telling us that it's nice and quiet and it's maintaining 70 miles per hour on the highway. So I think we solved all the problems. So we're uh, most of the way home. What do you think? I think that uh, really awesome to get an ECU and a mass airflow sensor from the Pittsburgh Vandigan Club Emergency Parts Network. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that the two parts we didn't bring with us, we were able to request they were delivered to us and they fixed the car. They fixed the car. And uh, we were able to get the exhaust back on with minimal banging on a quiet Sunday morning by the river. Hey, it's quiet. And the it van runs. is performing better than ever. Although I do think I'm not getting wide open throttle. So I'm gonna try to adjust that cable a little bit. Okay. Maybe not now, because I got a bunch of crap back there. I was so mm -hmm. confident in this van that I loaded the hatch shut. Good. And I regret that. But you're doing 70 miles per hour now. Doing 70 miles per. Uh, of course, the boss dig leads the way, and that helps a lot getting the slipstream. But no, super happy with, with Wanda's performance and uh, good. our performance this weekend. Nice. Yeah, this was a good trip so far. We still have uh, 100 miles to go, but I think we're going to make it pretty, pretty predictably. I think we're switching to side roads and going to enjoy it. All right, let's drive fast. Take chances. Good. That's the moral of the story. Also, fix your car in a parking lot. Works for us. We had to pull off uh, a little bit of a concern. The exhaust got louder again. I'm gonna take a little gander, see what we can find. So the way to test for an exhaust leak is to take a shoe. And you would have heard the leaks otherwise. So no exhaust leaks, she's sealed up, we're good to go.